In this exercise, we're going to be discussing creating fillets. Now, to me, the fillet command is the most fun. It's my favorite command in Inventor. I can't explain why. I guess it's the nerd in me. It is my favorite, and I find it fun to use. I can't explain it any other way. Maybe it's past trauma from creating fillets manually. Maybe just the fact of how easy it is to create fillets inside of Inventor. Play along with me here, and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I do. So to start with, we're going to come up and we're going to click on the fillet command. Just like other tools inside of Inventor, we have the mini toolbar, or we have the full rollout. To go through the options, I'm going to go through the full rollout. Most of the time, I just use the mini toolbar whenever possible. We have three main types of fillets. We have edge fillet, face fillet, and then we have full round. I'm going to start with the full round just because it's the easiest to use. Probably the least used of any of them. I don't know, maybe the face fillet's less used than this, but to use the full round, you just follow along with the commands. Remember, the red arrow tells us that it wants some kind of input. So, side face one, center face, side face two, apply, and you're done. It's literally that easy. The next command up is face fillet. And to be honest with you, this one probably is used less than the full round because I'm not really even sure why you need the face fillet versus an edge fillet. Technically, the edge is between two faces. I'm guessing if you had some kind of gap in there that it'll fill in that gap and just allow it to jump over the gap. Maybe that's what it is, but I don't use this one very much at all. And then lastly, we have the edge fillet. This is going to be the workhorse of the fillet command. You come in here and it'll allow you to add multiple fillets at once. But not only that, we can actually add multiple radiuses. We can say that one's gonna be 1875, this one's gonna be 0.25, and we could add it all day long. Now, one of the things with fillet is I always suggest you try to get it to the end of part whenever possible. You, know, you don't wanna create fillets as you go whenever possible because they will get in the way. It makes your part more complex. It's easier to add them at the end. With that said, it's not always possible. Sometimes you do have to create them as you go. And then rule of thumb for me is I try to keep fillets together. So if it makes sense, for example, inside of this area here, this void, then I'll put all the fillets together. If not, then I want to separate them out into different features so that I can find them. Because if I do 500 fillets on this part and they're all inside of one feature, it's very hard to isolate one fillet out of all the 500 and edit it later on. The only time I would probably do something where I would do every fillet, I remove these from my selections, I can come in here and say all fillets, and that's basically all inside corners and all rounds. And the only time I would ever do this probably is if I was going to take and do some kind of tumble polish, where you're going to basically take every edge off of every single edge in the part. And it's going to tumble through some kind of machine to get rid of all these edges. Most of the time, you're going to want to manually do this. Now, with that said, you do have the option of coming in here and saying, give me this whole feature. And it'll go through and give you everything in that feature. Or you can say, give me a loop. And it'll give you an entire loop around a face. So those are pretty powerful and very easy to use if you want to do a loop or a feature. Most of the time, you're either going to do the loop or probably the edge. You know, the edge gives you the most control. Unless you're just doing hundreds and hundreds of edges, you're going to want to do this manually so that you don't end up with kind of a mess. So let's take a look at some of the other options inside of here. First off, if I do a fillet here, and I'm real close to this edge here, and let's make it even more so, so you can really see how this fillet is going to be affected by the edge of this part. If I expand out this dialog box, I can have the two options here. Say so rolling ball when possible, and check that, and then roll along sharp edges. And I could have both of them on. If you can see there, there's rolling ball when possible. Turn that off. Roll along sharp edges. Basically what this means is, especially the sharp edges. This tries to keep the fillet constant. Even though it runs off the edge of the part, 
it tries to never reduce the amount. So think about this if you were machining this part and you had a mill going around this round and it had a rounded bit on the end of it, you would get this constant radius all the way around. There'd be no way to remove it. Whereas if we say roll along sharp edges, what that's going to try to do is it's going to try to come down to the part. I like to think of this more as if you were welding on the part and you didn't have any material there to go to, so you would have to go down to the flat. Neither one's wrong. Think about your design intent when you do these and manage it how best fits the part. So we can let these go here. We can do apply or we can do OK. Apply will let us continue on. And see here, I'll do this. Fill it, I'll do this one, and I'll do this one here. And I did this because I wanted to show you another option here. I'm going to go to the last tab here. We'll come back to the variable in a second. We're going to look at the setbacks. Setback basically says, how do I want this fillet to intersect this edge? Once again, this would be if you're machining this part. You had the bit go this way, then you had the bit go this way. You know, maybe this is the radius of the bit. And so that we get that corner edge there. What you can also do is we can come in here and say, okay, the radius of this fillet is 0.125. But down here in this corner, for whatever reason, we need it to see that be a much softer corner. We can go way out here even with this. And you can see you can get a nice, very soft corner. I can also add another one here and go the other direction. And you can see there I can get a nice, very rounded corner. And you know, if you want to get rid of sharp corners or something, you can do more than one. You can also go back and say minimal. And what that's going to do is it's going to try to keep it down as small as possible and it gets rid of that setback that we just created. Now. Apply that there and see what she looks like. Very clean. We've got one more option to look at. And I'm going to flip it over here to this other side so we can see it. We have the variable radius fillet. Say, well, that looks pretty standard. Well, when you start, it does. Then what we can do is we can come in here and we could actually tell it at a certain position. I'm just going to eyeball this just for time's sake. In real life, I would come in here and fill in these numbers. So I get a nice even dispersal here of variable radiuses. As you can see, I can actually get a wavy effect. I like to call this like a pistol grip. If you have like a tool, for example, that has kind of a finger grip on it, then you can use this variable radius to get a good finger grip on something. The other option would be if you have a very small part that you have a fillet coming up to. The one time I've really had to use this and it came in very handy is I had a plastic part that had a 0.125 radius coming around an edge. And then that fillet had to meet a fin on that plastic part that was only 0.125 wide and it had to be filleted on both sides. So my fillet had to go from 0.125 down to basically 0.625, even a little bit less than that, and then go across the fin, and then back out to 0.125 to continue on. So I was able to use the variable radius and get that nice rounded edge. This one, like I said, is a very fun one to play with here. You can see the result, and you get these nice soft edges with the fillet. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to hurry up, and I'm going to jump over to creating fillets dash two. Roman numeral 2.ipt. And we're going to do a real quick hands on exercise. So I want you to open this up. I want you to use the fillet command. And I want you to come over and select our rounded edge here. It has 2 millimeter by default. That's fine. We're going to select the bottom edge. And we're going to change that to 4 millimeters, like so. We can actually rotate our part around and do the other side at the same time. You'll say, wait a minute, you forgot the round. How do you go back to it and edit it? Just select it. 
and you'll notice the little arrow comes back. So now I can add the two millimeter to that side as well. Like I said before, I try not to add too many fillets into one area. So I'm going to hit apply here because the next one I'm going to add, I don't want to lump everything together. So I'm going to select the outside edge here, outside edge here. Let's do like a 20 millimeter. 25 will get down into our hole here. And I can come in here and do this. And you can say, oh, wait, 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 that's way too big. That's okay. Hold on a second. We're going to come back and we're going to edit this. For this edge here, let's do four. Hit OK. And you can see there, Inventor did a really good job on calculating that. Had I gotten an error when I'd done this, which you will get sometimes, you may need to do the first set of fillets and then go back and do the second. These large 20 millimeter fillets, for example, sometimes you have to do that big one and then go back and do the second one so it can calculate it easier. But in this case, it was able to calculate it together. So I kind of put you know, the fillets for this area together and then the fillets for this area together. You can kind of see the grouping there and how important that is. The other option I would have had in here is instead of putting all of these into one fillet, I come in here and I hold down control. And I select this one and I hold down control. I can remove what I already did. Got that line over there. I'm trying to deselect and I'm adding there. Hit OK. If I look at my origin plane, I don't have a middle plane, but what I can do is I can say this in, this in. And then I could actually mirror that fillet based on that plane and get the same results. So it depends on, you know, how many objects you have to select. My rule of thumb, if I have to select more than five things, I will mirror it if possible. Sometimes that's not possible though, and you can just add it in there. So think about your groupings. Think about the easiest way to keep things together. Don't get too overwhelmed by them. Play with this a little bit. We can even come in here one last thing here. You say, give me this feature and hit OK. You can see there it went around the edges. And then we can come in here to this top edge. Hit OK. And you get this nice rounded part. It's fun to play with. It's fun to use. Have fun with it. See what you can do. And hopefully you'll enjoy fill it as much as I do.